Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. As always, I apologize for this crazy Colorado sun. I kind of sometimes wish I lived in like the Pacific Northwest to where it's always kind of cloudy because it makes lighting really good. <laughs> anyway, speaking of lighting, this video is going to be about uh, all the lights on my 2016 Toyota Tacoma. Now this truck's pretty dialed at this point in its, in its life. I've modified a lot of things and I have it pretty much how I want. The only major change I've made in the last six to nine months probably was I swapped out all the lighting. Now I had an interesting opportunity with KC. I've been friends with them for a long time. I have their lights on, on the RAV4, but I hadn't had them on my Tacoma. And they said, hey, we're, we'd, we'd love to use your truck and you in like an upcoming ad for a brand new light we're releasing. That light was the KC Flex Era 3s. So I had a couple of videos where I kind of like blurred these out because I was testing them for a bit. But anyways, I was like, yeah, sounds cool. Uh, so they told me a little bit more about the project and I said, yeah, I'm on board. So we got all my lights swapped out and went out up into the mountains and filmed, filmed a little commercial. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's been on YouTube and Instagram and probably Facebook and stuff. People have sent it to me a thousand times. So I know it's been seen, but in case you haven't seen it, I'm gonna go ahead and roll it right now. So I hope you enjoy this little one minute advertisement. It's not just the lights that make the world's first off-road lighting brand last for 50 years. It's not the vehicles that helps guide through the night. It's the passion that drives it. The same passion that drives our family to adventure further. The KC Flex Era 3 is the next era of off-road lighting products which embody that passion. A light made by people who feel as strongly about design and performance as an artist would feel about their life's work. A light to lead the way into the next 50 years. We're not just a lighting company, we're a family. Meet our newest member, the compact and powerful KC Flex Era 3. Adventure further. So that went well, and that was a lot of fun for me to be a part of. It's all linked to the the kind of production crew that put that together. They're actually out here in Colorado. I've been chatting with them about working uh, on some kind of personal projects that I've wanted to do. So maybe stay tuned for some more fun like that. But anyway, so I got tied into KC. They did send all of these lights out for free. Has a lot of things on my channel. I, I test a lot of products and I work with a lot of companies. So full disclosure, these were sent to me for free, but I liked them so much I didn't, I didn't swap back to my old lights. Uh, and then I've developed a relationship with KC now to where I'll probably be involved with some upcoming product testing. They're coming out with a ton of new stuff in 2021 that they're stoked about and I'm stoked about as well. So uh, you'll be seeing some more new upcoming lights on the channel. Channel as I kind of test and evaluate them. Some are kind of NDA stuff, so I can't talk too much, but cool stuff coming in the future. Uh, but this video is just going to be talking about all of the lights that I have installed. I've done a few lighting videos in the past, so uh, some stuff hasn't changed. I haven't changed out my headlights or my taillights, so I'll touch on them super briefly, but we'll mostly be talking about all the new stuff that I have up. And also my FJ60, I've been just tweaking some things on it, swapping a few little things out, but I am gonna be doing a walk around of it in the next couple of weeks probably, so you can stay tuned for that. I've been really liking it, but I haven't, I'll talk. I'll talk more about the FJ60 later. So I think I'm just gonna grab the camera and kind of show you some stuff as we go. Oh, also real quick, you guys know as often as possible, I try to get you guys coupon codes with the companies that I work with so you guys can save a few bucks. Casey was on board, so they gave me a coupon code for 10% off. And it's like most of my codes, LLOD, will save 10% off at kchighlights.com. And as always, you can find all my coupons at llod.us slash coupons. It's just one place I put all the coupons for all the companies that I work with so you can save some money. So there's that. And again, I apologize for the crazy harsh lighting and the shadows and everything. Uh, I know people will wanna see some clips of the lights in action. So I'm gonna show some driving clips at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. But right now I'll just kind of talk about the different models. So these are the KC Highlights G4 Fogs. I got them in amber. These are DOT approved so you can legally 
have them on while you're driving on the road, which I like. Uh, so they're not, these aren't, you know, that means they're not like crazy blind everyone around you bright. So if you're looking for that, I wouldn't go for a DOT approved light. I'd go for a non DOT, but I like driving with my fogs on legally on the road. I like the amber. I like the contrast it gives with the, with the snow. I see a lot of snow and bad conditions here. And so I also opted for ambers in the light bar area since I was kind of had my choice to go clears or ambers. I really like lighting down low and I really like amber lights down low. And part of the reason, like I mentioned, is it adds some contrast to the snow. It cuts through fog and dust and dirt a little bit better. So having lights down low already helps with that. And then having amber helps a little bit more with that. So these are amber, even though they don't look amber, and these are amber covers. So some of Casey's lights work with covers. Actually, all the lights I'm gonna be talking about today, you can add covers on them to get them amber if you want them to be amber. And I, amber, it's kind of a personal preference. I prefer uh, the 5000K of most of their other lights. I like 5000K color temperature. In general, it's more pleasing to my eye than amber, but functionally I like amber. So down low, I decided to go ahead and keep it with amber. This is a flex 20 inch light bar. Uh, these, if you want them, get them because they're they're going away. They got some things replacing those. And then over here are the new ones. So these are the KC Flex Air 3. So these and the old Airs as well have replaceable kind of bezel borders. So these are like the gold, but you can get red, blue, black. You can take them off. You could spray paint them a different color or get them powder coated or whatever you want. So that just kind of lends some visual customizations that you can do with the stuff. I opted for the kind of combo pattern. So these are kind of floods up here and then a spot down here. So you can get it full spot or flood. Since I have them as ditch lights over here, they, I like them a little more floody because it illuminates more like that. And I'll talk about kind of the orientation of all these lights in a second. So I have these here and over there as well. And then up top here, I have the Pro 6 light bar. Yes, this thing is expensive. So just know that before you start looking. Uh, th the nice thing about this, if you can tell, is you can kind of radius it. So these are all individuals are spots. So each of these is a actually super energy efficient spotlight, but there's a lot of them here and I don't need necessarily a full spot to see way, 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 way down the trail uh, because I'm not driving, you know, 150 miles an hour. So I opted to spread these out. So I have it in kind of a, you know, it's kind of similar to a curved light bar in a sense to where this is angled so far to the side that it's almost like a dish, ditch light, which allows me to angle this one even more off to the side. So if you can see here, that light is, you know, not completely sideways, but pretty sideways because it kind of picks up where that one cuts off. So that one comes out here and then where the edge of that one is, is the edge of that. So then I have even more illumination. So when I'm driving, really my whole field of view when I have those and those on is illuminated. Now these just aren't, you're not going to get the kind of power out of these as you can get from a giant system like this. So I don't run that that often. It's not uncommon. I almost always have my fogs on. It's not uncommon for me to have this on on the road, even though it's technically, you know, not DOT. I live in the mountains. I drive on a lot of backcountry roads and a lot of mountain roads and stuff. Sometimes I'll turn these on as well, but those are just, they're very bright. And I've said in the past that roof light bars aren't my favorite because if it's raining or if it's foggy or if it's snowing or if it's dusty, the light up here just illuminates all of the stuff in front of you. I don't care too much about the roof, though I do have a matte wrap and this is a, this is a solar panel. I'll probably talk about that at some point later, but I'll link it down below if you're interested. But I don't have, I don't care too much about the bounce off the roof. I care just that it illuminates all of the dust and everything. And you can put amber covers on these and that's, it's a little, the amber covers are a little too showy for me, honestly, but functionally they would, they would help with that. But in general, roof light bars will 
kind of make it hard to see if, it's, if you're in a very dusty or rainy or snowy environment. So I typically will run that if it's clear and you know it's not a super dusty road, stuff like that, or if I'm going low speed at night and I just kind of want to illuminate and see everything, it's a great option. So I just want you to know that I'm still don't love light bars because they're, or I don't love roof light bars because they're not good in all environments. But when you just want a ton of light and to illuminate everything, something like this really can't be beat. So up here they sell brackets specific to the Tacomas. Let me see if I can see better on the other side. Yeah, so maybe you can see better. So this is, KC Highlights sells this bracket for Tacomas. You can bolt it into the roof. There's actually two bolts here that go into the standard threaded studs and then one here that I didn't connect. And so if you can see, these two bolts are the same bolts that the front runner roof rack hooks into. So the roof rack mount and the light bar mount are just both into those two bolts. And then it has like a center, sorry for the light again, support that you can either, I've seen some people hook this into the rack system or you just put it down uh, on the base of your roof to give a little bit more support. Now I did with an angle grinder have to cut this portion out to make clearance for the front runner. Again, this bracket is like a year old, so I don't know if they've changed it since now, but you may need to angle grinder, basically cut out a notch so it fits with your front runner system. But that is the mounting mechanism. So a lot of people ask how you get the wiring up to the roof. Another product Casey sells is this little roof channel. So this is a little channel that 3M, sorry, this lighting is just so bad. It 3M tapes to your windshield and then has a little channel for you to run your wiring in. So then when you see it, it's just a really nice, clean wiring system. Uh, it's not like duct taped to the windshield, though I did have this duct taped to the windshield before I installed that little wire passage runway. And then I know it's a pretty crazy light system up here. So a lot of people ask about wind noise and it's not bad, honestly. So wind noise and light bars and stuff, typically uh, it gets bad when it, when it whistles because the flow of the air is very uniform and then it causes a whistle and then it gets crazy. And there's ways to get around that obviously. But this is different enough. It breaks the wind up enough that there's no real whistle granted it's going to be louder than if you have no roof rack have no lights or anything but it's not too obnoxious and i actually removed the wind fairing altogether from my front runner rack that i was having some road noise with so then i added the wind fairing and it fixed it this disrupts the wind enough to where i don't need the fairing anymore either so i get no whistles or anything like that again a little bit of road noise but but nothing too crazy. And then I added some new lights up here. These are just kind of camp scene lights. I did these up in amber so they don't attract as many bugs and stuff. These don't come in amber natively though. So I ordered, and I'll link it down below, just like an amber film that I just stuck on and then cut the edge with the razor blade. And so it kind of, you know, it looks, looks kind of OEM. Anyway, these are the C2 floods. So these project a very wide angle uh, of light. So they're not a spotlight at all. So they kind of flood. So they make really good area lights uh, for when I'm just setting up camp and stuff or when I'm on the trail and I just want some direct side illumination, I can turn those on as well. And then back here, uh, I've talked about it before, but this is a WeBoost antenna on a front runner antenna mount. So I can flip this up and down depending on if I need it or not. I usually have it flipped down just because uh, once it's flipped up, it gets pretty tall and I don't have clearance in a lot of places. Cool, and so other than that, these are still the, the headlights I got from Tacoma Beast, which I, you know, I don't love. I think they look good, but I don't love the output. Big pain in the butt to swap these out for LED bulbs because the bulbs that come with them are horrible. So I did swap these out for LEDs. They're still going strong. So if you want to watch my old lighting video, I talk more about those. And then I have kind of the blacked out taillights as well. Uh, no issues with these either. Still, I still really like, like these. And that's really all that I've done for lighting. I have some cheap eBay rock lights underneath that kind of went out on me. <laughs> so I may, 
I may at some point when I'm not feeling lazy put some KC Cyclones under there or something, but but that's about it. I've thought about maybe putting like a little chase light back here. I kind of want to put a chase light back here that I have on an arm that basically I can like rotate it down. So it can be up like this for chase lights and then I can rotate it down for like a camp light because I do a lot on my tailgate back here. So when I'm back here like cooking food or whatever and I have some stuff going on here, I can fold this light down to illuminate this area. So that's something I've been kicking around the idea of that I may still do eventually, but nothing, nothing yet. Really, I just use this little stream light here that's magnetic and I kind of use that as that for now just because it's easy and I can, I can use this elsewhere. I can pull this off and put it over on the side or something. So kind of a nice little, nice little stream light light here that I like a lot. Also has a little hook. This is not a camping light at all. This is like a, a work light. It's really geared for like mechanics and stuff, but works really well uh, for camping. And then yeah, got my Diamondback still. It's very cool. So Diamondback, I'll tell you more about it later. But like I said earlier, since this truck's pretty dialed and I don't tweak on it and do a bunch of mods, I have a I have a plan with Diamondback to do a new build from the ground up. So you can watch exactly how I would build an Overland built truck. It's not going to be a Tacoma, but I'll I'll save a little bit of the surprise for later. But Diamondback's going to own the truck. And I'm not, I'm not, it's not going to be my truck, but I'm going to use it probably for like a year and then we're going to do something cool with the truck. So I'll talk more about that as the plan kind of finalizes, but you can look forward to me like building a truck up from scratch since this is, you know, already pretty built up. The last thing I want to talk about is this Switch Pro that I have in here. It's, there's my steering wheel. There's this little cubby. So they sell a Switch Pro mount that goes right in here. That's pretty nice, but I have my... I have my ham radio here. So I mounted it just with Velcro. So I just put double-sided sticky tape like Velcro stuff. So this is just Velcroed on. So it just comes off like that. So I just have this Velcroed here. So it's not a super permanent mount and I have it vertical. And I do know that they just released the vertical stickers, but I haven't changed those out. So. I've rewired my whole truck. So I ripped all my old wiring out and replaced it with this. So I ripped, you know, <laughs> however much wiring out, uh, my fuse, my fuse block, all this stuff and replaced it just with this because this doesn't require any of that. It's a Switch Pro. This is the eight switch one and it is incredible. I cannot recommend this enough, uh, especially starting from scratch. It'll save you so much time and headache. And I like it because it has more functionality. So I have these, all these things wired up. You can wire, you know, two things up to one switch. You can wire up to where your roof light bar comes on when you turn your high beams on, stuff like that. I haven't gotten too fancy. I have some of these on to where you can still turn them on even when your ignition is off. By default, you can't because that'll kill your battery. But this does have some smart wiring in to where it'll shut everything off before it gets too low for your battery to start. So even if you have them, set up to where you can have these switches on when your car is not running, it still will do its best to not kill your battery and just shut the lights off or whatever you're using. Uh, and then you can also dim and strobe. So like my side lights that I have, these side lights on my roof rack, I have those to dim. So when I just want a little bit of extra light at night, I dim those down. But when I want them full bright, I brighten them up. And then all these other things too are, you can do strobe, you can do flash. So if you, for instance, are somewhere and you're radioing on your friends, like, oh, come meet us and he doesn't see you, you could boom, strobe, like strobe with your light bar and people could see you for miles. So there's a lot of cool features that you can do with this thing. Um, but it's a Switch Pro. Maybe at some point I'll do a dedicated video on it or something, but it's essentially an accessory lighting panel that just has way more functionality than a single on off switch, which is what I was using previously in here. So very, very, very happy 
with this setup. Okay guys, I think that about wraps it up for the lighting stuff. Again, stay tuned for the FJ60 video is coming on up. Also, I was out a few weeks back out in Moab, Toyota, put this thing together with me and this chef, now my buddy, Adam Glick, who has a cool truck that I'll do a walk around of that soon. I already filmed it, but it'll be up on my channel at some point. But we're out in Moab, Toyota took care of everything, sent us out there, had a big film crew, made three episodes of this thing. That's gonna be on my channel. So that's coming up soon, but just to kind of tee you up. Uh, and yeah, since I know people will ask, this is Magpul beanie, Magpul sunglasses. They're my favorite, these explorers. I'll link to them. And this is a new flannel. It's flannel season here. So I basically wear flannels all winter long, even though I know it's not technically winter. It's, it's basically winter here where I live. So this is a flannel from Off The Grid Surplus. I really, I really like it. I think it's for pre-order now, but they also got, gave me a coupon code. So LLOD will save 10% 10 off everything there. I'll link this stuff down below. And then I know you didn't see them, but I'm kind of excited about these. So these are, I don't have them tied up cause I just kind of threw them on cause I'm just walking around. But these are the Danner Vertigo 917 boots. I loved my Mountain 600 so much that these are like the casual version of the, those. So a little lighter, a little more breathable, a little more flexible. Uh, so these are those in this kind of sage green color uh, and they're Gore-Tex. So I wear boots pretty much all winter long because I am in snow for much of the winter. So I like waterproof boots. So these are, these are my new jams and Vertex also got their new Delta stretches in. So yeah, I know most of you are into hearing about my gear. And for those of you that don't like hearing about gear, tough luck, cause this is a gear channel. So yeah, that's pretty much that. And I've had a lot going on in my life. There's a lot of fun stuff, all good, but it's been keeping me busy. Uh, so I've just been, I've been overwhelmed as usual, but there's some really fun life changes happening for me over the next few months to year. Sorry, my dog's just barking at a squirrel or something, but I'll talk more about it later, but I'm very excited about it. So get subscribed if you're not already, you know, YouTube stuff, thumbs up. And I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I'm super thankful for you. I put a post over on Instagram. I don't know if you follow my Instagram. If not, I'll put a thing right here, but kind of a thanks, thanks post. I really appreciate you watching my videos and commenting and subscribing and sharing them, all that stuff. I wouldn't have never thought a few years back that I could kind of make a living just, you know, having fun and giving information and testing products. But uh, it's kind of what my life has turned into in a reality and I owe it all to you guys. So I just want to thank you for the continued support. Um, and really, obviously I make videos for you. I don't really make videos. I don't like watching myself on camera. I don't like the sound of my own voice. So I make videos for you guys. So I try to ask this once in a while, uh, in addition to saying just thanks for supporting me through my journey, but what can I do on my channel that would, would serve you better? What do you want to see? What do you want to watch? What can I help educate or entertain you with? Because really at the end of the day, I'm an entertainer, a little bit of an educator as well. So let me know what you would like to see here on this channel. I'll continue doing whatever the heck I want, but if I can do whatever the heck I want and kind of make it what you want to see as well, that's a, that's a double win and I'll always choose that path. So let me know down below kind of what stuff you want to see, what stuff you already enjoy seeing, what stuff you'd like to see more of. Uh, I try to ask that question here and there, but I really do like hearing your input on that because it really does help kind of guide the channel, the trajectory of the channel and what I do. So. I appreciate your feedback and yeah, until next time guys, take care. All right, headlights only, fogs, roof, pro sixes, bumper, which I really need to aim up some. 
and then now sides. You can see, you can see very well.